So, the last time I took a look at the HTC One M8, it honestly really impressed me, especially with the build quality on this thing. But unfortunately, this phone is stuck on Android 6.0, so maybe there's like custom ROMs out there that can help us breathe more life into this phone. Guess we'll hit up the internet and take a look. Oh yeah, that's, that's right, I punched a phone into this screen. Will this external monitor at least work? And even with it plugged in, it still doesn't want to work. You know what, I got a fix for this. Alright, so to install this custom ROM, I guess we're going to need a new laptop. Okay, so let's check out HTC One M8 Custom ROM. Looks like the newest ROM on here is for Android 14.0, Lineage OS 21.0. Now, I do Lineage OS in pretty much every custom ROM video I do, so after this, we're gonna install some random fun ROM. For now, though, I just wanna see how Android 14 works on this. Okay, so first things first, we gotta grab a custom recovery for this phone. Now, I actually have no idea how to get into the flash mode for this phone, so we gotta Google that. Hold both the power and volume down button while the device is off. Ooh, <laughs> I haven't seen this before. That's actually a pretty fun touch. The people at HTC who made this recovery menu put the bug droid skateboarding at the bottom. All right, and after navigating to fastboot, that should be all we need to flash TWRP. And before you ask, the tape in the corners to keep the hinge from falling apart on this thing. What an upgrade, am I right? Now let's open our debugging tools and command prompt to just fastboot flash this recovery over. What? Wait, why did you open PowerShell by default? Windows 11 moment. All right, so inside here, let's run that same command. Wait, why is it not finding it? Oh, you know what? I know what the issue is. It's a driver issue. This is a completely new Windows install. <laughs> yeah, this is being reported as Android 1.0. You're, uh, you're a bit off there. Anything in here? Nah, okay, so we gotta search online for some drivers. So I was looking online and I found this website that says universal ADB drivers for pretty much any Android phone. And at first I thought it was a bit sketch, but it's got a GitHub repo with 2.3k stars, so whatever, I guess I'll trust it. Please disconnect your Android device before installing universal ADB driver. Whoops, my bad. Sorry, I'm just very enthusiastic. And now that we have that Swiss Army Knife driver installed, will it work? Oh, okay, so we still gotta keep digging then. Latest HTC drivers from 2013. These should work. The driver installer is not supported for this operating system. Oh, okay then. Wait, it, oh, it just works. It just works anyways? Okay, that's cool. Now will it work? Oh, boy. Okay. Alright, so par for the course with Windows here, but we have another driver hell issue, which I don't feel like solving, so let's just move over to Linux. Whoa, imagine that, a computer that just works. All right, and all we do is fast boot, flash, recovery, and then drag the TWRP file in there and hit enter. What, signature verify fail? To use fast boot, you have to unlock your bootloader with HTC dev tool. Oh no, do we gotta do the website thing? All right, so apparently we have to go through this website that hasn't been touched in 10 years to unlock the bootloader on the phone. You are not logged in. I, I have to make an account to use my phone? Good enough. Mmm, okay, yeah, thanks. Why didn't you tell me that when I was making the f***ing account? Hooray! What a complete waste of time this is. And now that we're logged in, I think this is a bigger waste of time, because all we have to do is enable OEM unlocking and developer options. Why didn't I do that to begin with? I didn't change a single thing since I last rebooted this phone, and every single time I try to use it, it just keeps spamming me with this message. Please, please, I just need to reach Google Play services and we're out of the woods. Please. <laughs> this is torture. We're so close. We're so close. Clear all data. Oh, it's over. All right, cool. Now that we're not being harassed, we can enable dev settings and unlock the bootloader. Oh no, uh-oh, I'm not seeing OEM unlock inside of here. Okay, I guess we'll proceed to step five and see what we do next. Inside of fastboot, we punch in this command. And then we copy all this info and throw it into the website right here. You've been sent an email. Oh no, wait, that was a throwaway email. Oh, never mind, that was close. Shout out to these guys at temp-mail.org. Save my ass. Now we just download the unlock code, and now we punch in fastboot flash unlock token and link it to the bin file. Isn't it just awesome how you have to go through this arbitrary process to try to use your old phone today? Now we couldn't unlock it inside dev settings, but looks like this triggered it. So yeah, unlock bootloader. Oh, you know what? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta use the volume buttons. And now we can flash TWRP, right? Oh wait, what? It's not fine. Oh, we gotta, we gotta boot it into fastboot mode first there we go nice okay so step one is done and now we can finally install the lineage os zip file damn only 647 megs for the entire android 14 os of course we gotta wipe all the data on the system before we flash the rom itself don't want any conflicts i don't think i've ever noticed this before but there's like just the most faint led inside the bar at the top maybe it'll get brighter once lineage os can talk to it and because we have the phone mounted with usb we can just throw the lineage os file over to it and there it is let's pray we don't run into any more issues seems like it worked hopefully we'll boot into android 14 and sweet android 14 on a phone from 
2014. This thing has a Snapdragon 801 and two gigs of RAM inside of it, which isn't really impressive today, but we don't have any Google Play services on this phone, so it should run fine, right? In my first impressions with Android 14 on this phone, honestly, it's actually pretty smooth. What's really impressing me with this phone is the fact that you can do gesture nav now, and it's, it's pretty responsive. It, it does have a hiccup every once in a while, but overall, pretty smooth. One of the best things about the HTC M8 is definitely the speaker grill setup it's got, so I hope Lineage OS is still able to take advantage of it. Now, I'm not one of those guys that obsesses over sound quality, but to me, that still sounds pretty good. Now, let's download Aurora Store just so we can access some Play Store apps without all the overhead. Let's take a look at an intense game that actually drops support for Android 6. And then after that, we're going to grab the Geekbench V4 APK just so we can compare it to how the phone runs on Android 6. All right, so first up, let's see how well Roblox runs on this old phone. The game's not running great, but at least it sounds great. Yeah, I think this qualifies more as slideshow than actual video game. It says 15 frames a second up in the corner, but I don't believe it for a second. I think Roblox is just too heavy of a game to run on this phone, but what about this game? It's a bit lighter, and it also drops support for Android 6. Yeah, this game is definitely a better fit for this phone. <laughs> Look how much more smooth it is. You know, it's actually really sad Supercell drops support for Clash of Clans on these older devices because they can handle them still just fine. And now the notification bar and our gestures are gone. I mean, I guess this was marked as a beta so let's just restart so if you only use lighter apps and don't mind the occasional bugs this is honestly still a pretty good experience today google pixel users know what i'm talking about yeah sorry just had to throw that straight out there all right let's see how the geekbench scores compare on android 6 to 14 for android 14 the htc 1m8 gets 1032 for single core and 2860 for multi-core and when that same test was run on android 6.0 the score was actually oh, lower than Android 14? How does that work? Especially when you're looking at the multi-core rating. An improvement of about 400. That's really impressive. And I just realized I used a newer test version, so I ran it again with the same exact test version, and we get similar results, so it's just better on Android 14. I'm honestly surprised with how usable this phone is on Android 14, considering it shipped with 6, but let's take a look at another ROM. Now, whenever I'm filming my videos, I always ask my members, what should I do next? And we got a couple results here. Let's see which one we're gonna do. And we're going to be installing whatever Bliss 6.1 is. Now, unfortunately, all the downloads for this ROM are taken down, but this one guy on XDA found a build of this that was modified by a Chinese dev. Just thinking out loud here, but if I do something the dev of this custom ROM doesn't like, am I going to lose social credit points? This should be interesting. Okay, so I guess they're going for like a Zen theme with this ROM. Yeah, I can't read these characters, but I'm just assuming Android is optimizing all the apps it has before it boots. Immediately from the color scheme up top, I can tell this is a setup from CyEngine Mod. So, when ignoring all the Chinese stuff pre-installed on the phone, it seems to be like a modified version of CyEngine Mod, and it still looks pretty slick. Usually when it comes to these modified custom ROMs, the coolest stuff is inside settings. Kernel Auditor, Themes, Equalizer, and Bliss Settings. What's the Kernel Auditor? Oh, apparently we have to give it root. Now let's check it out. So the kernel auditor lets us see what's going on inside the system with a scary amount of detail. And along with letting us see everything, it lets us modify stuff too, like we can restrict the GPU to the maximum power level while gaming. Originally, I just thought this was like a system information app, but there are so many options here, it's insane. You can even edit the build number of the system itself. Now that's actually a really cool feature I've never seen on a custom ROM before, but what's in Bliss settings? I think I've seen all these features on the other custom ROMs I've taken a look at in the past, but what about the lock screen? Long press power button while screen is off to turn on flashlight, that's actually really convenient. Or I guess it would be if it was easy to reach on this phone. Oh, and speaking of the lock screen, this design where it like blurs the app you were doing in the background is really cool. And for some reason they built in this really dangerous tool where we can remove system apps, so let's just remove everything and see what happens. Whoa, what, 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 I didn't even do anything. You know what, I think maybe it's a good idea to not give this random sketchy rating app root access. Anyway, we got everything selected, so let's see if this nukes our phone. Everything still seems functional, right? Oh no, okay, stuff is starting to break. The phone part of the phone isn't working anymore. All right, I think that's about it for now. So that's installing Android 14 in this uh, this kind of strange custom ROM with the HTC One M8. I'm really glad these older Android phones let you unlock the bootloader because it just makes them so much more usable today when you can upgrade the Android version on them. It is kind of annoying having to go through a website to get the unlock code and everything, but once you do it, you don't have to worry about it again. Anyways, thanks for watching it. Let me know down in the comments, uh, what other Android phones do you want me to put a custom ROM on and what custom ROMs do you want me to take a look at? Alright, I'll see you later.